Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication that is put out by the Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. If you'd like to learn more about the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and on the left-hand side of the homepage, there are several tabs that you can click on that will take you to various links about the paper, and also there are several links that include all the papers in PDF format from 1953 all the way up through 2021. If you'd like to receive the paper through email in PDF format, or you'd like to receive it through, through the United States Postal Service, all of our contact is contact information is on the website, or you can find us on Facebook, on Church of Christ at Mammoth Spring, or Fulton County Gospel News. And so the paper is, there's no charge for the subscription. We'll just put you on the mail list, and you'll start receiving it every other month. All right, today on this particular edition of the podcast, I want to talk about social consequences of Christianity or social consequences of following Jesus. There are two passages that I want to, that I want to study, well not study, that I want to look at just, just quickly to kind of set the stage for the rest of the podcast. So the first one is in John chapter 9, and this is the account where Jesus has healed the man who was born blind, and it's caused quite a stir and his parents have been called in to, I guess you would say, verify what has happened. So I'm going to start reading here in John chapter 9, beginning in verse 18. The Bible there says, But when the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered and uh, answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. Then you get down to verse 22. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. What we see here is his parents, the blind man's parents who had been healed, they're afraid of the social consequences of, of, the, of making the confession. Yes, I know Jesus, this is our son, and we know that Jesus healed him. And so they, instead of making a statement and suffering the social consequences, they just remain silent. Now, there's another account of this over in John chapter 12, and I'm going down here, John chapter 12 and verse 42. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. So that's essentially the same thing we just read, but I would say, I would say this particular passage addresses, yes, it addresses the social consequences, but I would say this one here touches more on the social pressure applied to people in regard to Jesus. This passage deals with the social pressure that was applied to people who would uh, acknowledge Christ and the miracles that he performed. And then verse 43 says, For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So you have social consequences, John 9, 18 to about verse 23. And then here you have social pressure being applied. And we know, you know, when you so when you go to the the Gospel of Matthew, and you get to chapter 27, and it's talking about Jesus having been handed over to Pilate. Matthew 27, 18 says that he knew, Pilate knew very well, that the Jews had delivered Jesus out of envy. He wasn't guilty. I think on three occasions, Pilate said, listen, I find no guilt in this man. He's not worthy of death. Pilate understood that. But there was social pressure put on him, and he washed his hands and walked away. And we know, of course, what happened to that. So what exactly is social pressure? Well, social pressure or social consequences, let's define that. Pressure, we know what pressure is. People are pushing you to do something or not to do something. A lot of times we talk to our young people about peer pressure and not giving in to peer pressure. The sad reality is, you know, I I would say typically we think of that as being a problem for younger and immature people. Well, the sad reality is it's just, a rea- it's just as much a reality for older 
and immature people too. But social consequences, by definition, the idea is there how personal relationships are affected by a decision you make. And, and whether it's whether you do something or whether you don't do something, it's it's having that fear or perhaps that hesitation of maybe losing someone or losing something or maybe losing some social status because because you say or do or believe something. So what? Okay, so what's the point? Well, I want to I want to touch now on two other passages. So John nine and John twelve kind of set up the set up the concept then of, of both social pressure and social consequences. I'm going to turn over real quick to, to 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I'm going to read verse 7 to you. And Paul there writing says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then one more verse I'm going to look at, and this is Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. And the Bible there says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, fornicators, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So both of these verses now, if you were looking at a King James Version in Revelation 21, verse 8, it reads, but the fearful. Well, the New King James uses the word cowardly. It's the same word in the Greek language. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 and Revelation 21 and verse 8. And the word is the idea of being timid or being cowardly. And that's that's the way the New King James uses it in Revelation 21 verse 8. Well, what does it mean to be timid? Okay, I think we would agree that the blind man's parents were timid in John chapter 9. They were cowardly. Uh, the people in John chapter 12 were cowardly. They were timid. They didn't want to to make that confession because they were afraid of the social consequences. They were under social pressure and their standing in their community in relationship to the synagogue. But the word timid, if you look up the definition, is, is this. Showing a lack of courage or confidence. Easily frightened. Well, you know, when you look at the book of Acts and you look at those early disciples who endured a great amount of persecution, they were not easily frightened. They were bold. In fact, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 29, in the midst of persecution, that's precisely what they prayed for. They prayed for boldness. But I want to consider something else, and then we're going to wrap this up. This is going to, this is going to be a shorter episode. Christians need courage. Christians don't need to be afraid to confess Christ publicly. Christians don't need to be afraid to let other people know that they are Christians. They don't need to be afraid to live their life as God has dictated through His Word. God has not given us a spirit of fear. And I understand Paul was writing that to Timothy, but the principle applies to us too. God has not given us a spirit of timidity. God does not want us to be without courage. He wants us to be strong and powerful and loving. He wants us to be bold. But, you know, there are consequences. There can be consequences for following Jesus Christ and for doing so faithfully. So I'm turning my Bible over to Matthew chapter 10. And this context is when Jesus sends out the disciples on the limited commission. And he's given them instructions as to what to do. But he's also giving them warnings as to what could possibly happen as they go out. You know, Paul tells us in in, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Well, listen to this. This is Matthew 10, beginning in verse 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. There will be social pressure for being a Christian. There will be social consequences for being a Christian. There is no doubt about that. And I say the longer, I I think I believe, the more this world goes on, the longer this world goes on, that social pressure and those social consequences 
will be brought out more and more, even here in the United States of America. We know it already happens in other places in the world. And we're so used to our freedom and ease of life here in America, I think we've taken it for granted perhaps too long. And, and it seems to me things are changing. But you know what? That's okay. I don't have a spirit of fear. God does not want His people, He doesn't want His children to be cowards. He doesn't want them to be timid. He doesn't want them to show a lack of courage or confidence. I always think of Psalm chapter 9 and verse 10. The psalmist there writes, And those that know thy name will put their trust in thee. See, I know who God is. I know his character. His word reveals to me the type of being that he is, that he's trustworthy. I can place my confidence in him. He is powerful. He's all-knowing. He loves me. He knows about me. He cares about me. Why should I be timid? Why should I lack the courage to, to live out my life as he has instructed in his word? Why should I be afraid to tell other people about him and about what his son has done for me on the cross and what we have in the church? Why should we be cowardly and timid? Remember what Revelation 21 and verse 8 says. There, I mean, there's some bad folks in there. Let me, let me turn back to that passage real quick. And, and, you know, we typically, I think we as humans have a, um, I would say a negative capacity to to classify sin. You know, some aren't so bad. Some sins are, you know, they're bad, but they're not too bad. And some are just some are just terrible. Well, so in Revelation twenty one eight, you've got murderers and idol worshippers and liars. I mean, that's all pretty bad. But the first one is the timid, the cowardly. Now, you know, there may be worse consequences. I would say to murder than simply a Christian not speaking up. Maybe, well, let me say it like this, immediate consequences. I mean, murder, you, you can't get much worse than that, taking someone's life, because you, number one, you take their life. Number two, you take their life from the people they love, family and friends and, and so on. But if you're cowardly, I mean, yeah, that's not so bad. At least you're not rude. Well, cowardly and, and those who are cast into the lake of fire who are going to suffer the second death, and of course that's eternal death, eternal separation from God after the judgment. Cowardly is at the head of the list, man. Murderer is not number one. Adultery is not number one. Stealing is not number one. Timidity, cowardice, a lack of courage is number one. There is social pressure. There will be social pressure. And there will be social consequences to being a Christian. But just remember what Paul wrote to Timothy back there in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We need to live accordingly. We don't need to live in fear. We don't need to lack courage. We need to stand up for what's right. We need to live what's right out in our daily lives. We need to set the example to those around us. You know, Jesus talks about us being the salt of the earth and the light of the world, that does not involve timidity. That does not involve cowardice. So let me encourage you as a Christian, be strong, be faithful, be courageous. Don't be afraid of social pressure. Don't be afraid of social consequences. We're told that will happen. That's, that's the thing. It's not like it should be a surprise when it does happen because we are told that it will. Be faithful to the end. I love 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Be strong and faithful. Thank you for listening today's, to today's episode of the Fulton County Gospel News podcast. We're on Podbean, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Subscribe to our channels, like and share this content if you would please. Our goal here at Mammoth Spring is to get God's Word out to as many people as possible through as many different mediums as possible. Visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com if you'd like to check out the paper, Fulton County Gospel News. All of our contact information is there, and it's a free subscription. Thanks again for listening today, and I will catch you on the next episode.